Hey y'all, today we're going to turn an ordinary object into a tumbler, so stick around. Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about taking an ordinary object and turning it into a tumbler. I know often I'll be walking around, I'll be at a store, or I'll just be out walking around outside and I'll see something and go, you know, that'd be a cool tumbler. So we're going to do that today. And it just so happens my wife is a collector of all kind of wild things. and. Uh, so we're going to take this tin and we're going to turn it into a tumbler. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, it's got some different really cool graphics on it. There also, I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about doing this one as well. Maybe I'll do that later. It's very cool. Um, but for today, we're going to do this. But the first thing we need to do is get a great photograph. So let's do it. So certainly if you have a DSLR, use it. But I wanted to make this tutorial using an iPhone as most people have a nice camera in their pocket. I happen to be using an iPhone 10. Now, the best outdoor lighting for great photography is typically sunrise and sunset as the colors are much warmer. But for this, I want bright daylight as I don't want to add any soft tones to the image. While you don't have to, I always use a tripod for this. If you have one, I suggest you use it as well. I also use the 10 second timer just to make sure there's no camera movement when the photo is taken. Okay, so let's go to the computer and make this happen. Let me start by saying I have a MacBook Pro and I'm using Photoshop Elements. I do have the full version of Photoshop, but I find this uh, version easier to use and it's a one-time purchase. Also keep an eye out as Adobe usually does a Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale. So this is the master template that I use to create new images and inside this black border is where I'm going to create everything. I've downloaded two separate images and one of these will be used as the main image. And I think it's going to be this one. So I'm going to copy it and paste it into the template. And what I really want to do now is size this image so it fits top to bottom within the parameters of the border. I don't use the grid very often because it distracts me, but this seems to be a good time to turn it on for a second so I can make sure the image is level. Right now I'm focused on getting the image to the right height. I'm not really worried about the width, at least not yet. I gotta turn that grid off. Now I'm going to remove what I know I won't use on the left and right side of the image. If I don't need it, I'm getting rid of it now. And I'm probably going to remove a bunch of that gold artwork as it will be difficult to try to recreate it since it wraps around the tin. I'm going to initially focus on the top and bottom and this particular image has a really great top and bottom to work with. I'm starting with the bottom and what I want to do is take this bottom edge of the tin and use that as the bottom of the image that we're creating. So I'm cutting out and leveling a section of the bottom and then once it's cut out I can duplicate it and slide it over to the right. So I'm going to flip that duplicated layer horizontally so the two ends match up uh, almost perfectly and then I can merge the two layers and clean the seam up just a little bit. And because I only have a small amount of extra space, instead of duplicating that again, I'm just going to stretch it out a little teeny bit. And now let's move to the top and do the same thing. I'm going to cut out a good chunk of that lid and then copy and paste it. And once I've moved it over to the right, I'm going to cut off the edges of each piece so they'll fit better together. And I wanted you guys to know 100%, 100% of my Photoshop knowledge is self-taught. And most of that was before YouTube. So you can do it. And now I'm going to merge the two layers and use the uh, blending tool uh, to make those seamless. This is really easy to do and it, it gives a great result. I'm going to use that same uh, blending tool to clean up the right and, um, and the left sides. Now 
Now I'm going to create a new layer that will ultimately blend with the background color of our original image. And to do that, I'll start by creating a new layer. I'll select the background color um, of the image and then paste that color onto that new black image. And, uh, and then I'm going to use the combination of the erase tool and the blend tool to blend that image uh, with the background that we just created. Uh, I'm starting with the erase tool and I'm going to try to get rid of uh, a lot of that gold artwork that's wrapping around the tin. Uh, the erase tool will get rid of the gold and then the blend tool will add some texture back. Uh, that's kind of the goal here. So I don't love the idea of getting rid of all of that wonderful artwork, but I'm not even going to try to begin to recreate it because of the way it's wrapped around the tin. However, I do want to keep some of it, partly because I like it and also because I don't want any dead space on the final image and I'd like to keep some of the integrity of the original tin. So what I'm doing here is duplicating that little section and then um, flipping the piece and, uh, and then we're going to try to uh, put them together so they look like they were supposed to be um, one. And of course, if we do one side, we've got to do the other side. Now, basically, I'm copying it and then flipping it and trying to mirror it. So, and, and then I got to remove that gold art that I like so much and make sure to blend that texture. And once I cut out the art, I'll continue to keep that texture as I go toward the edge of the uh, image. And um, I actually duplicated and flipped the lower image, uh, that, pot bottom, that bottom piece of, of gold. Um, I flipped it a little earlier. Um, but I need to clean up that duplicated piece and merge it with the main image and, uh, and then clean that up a bit. This can be a bit tedious, but the devil is in the details when it comes to this. I also need to extend the band uh, across the top trying to keep from messing up that artwork that I just merged. I, I probably should have done that before I merged it, but I didn't. Live and learn. So as I'm doing this, I look at the, um, the center of that piece of art and it's very black. So I need to, once I finish this band, I need to go back in there and and add some uh, texture and make it less black looking. Easy fix. And you know, I think I was calling it a blend tool. It's actually the clone stamp tool, but it does a heck of a job blending. I need to clean up this bottom piece of the gold artwork here. And you know, I want to tell you, I don't like all that white going down the middle of this. So I'm going to use that clone stamp tool, now that I am calling it by the right name, uh, to copy some of the, to copy some of this and get rid of that white. We should be able to take care of that. That tool really does work uh, wonders. So basically I'm just uh, taking the little loops that are off to the side and copying them and, and cloning them right down the middle to get rid of that white. And that should do it. And now I just need to use that clone stamp cool to blend more of that outside area. So I just make that size larger and then it's easier to uh, copy some of those, um, uh, some of that texture. 
Now here's something I really like doing, um, and I try to do it whenever I can. Uh, I'm gonna create a natural seam that'll look good on the image and also potentially hide any mistakes on the actual seam when I'm pressing onto the tumbler. And basically what I'm doing here is duplicating the bottom, turning it 90 degrees to the right, and then scooting it up against the edge. Um, I'll size it to fit the length, then tuck it behind that top horizontal uh, lid piece. I'm going to have to erase just a little bit of the lid to make the size uh, blend a little bit easier. It's not quite as hard of an edge by doing that. And I might should take that all the way out, but I'm going to try it uh, like this. Because I don't want any dead space on either side of the image, I'm going to take a couple of pieces from this other uh, photo that I took and um, and put it in that dead space to make it undead. And I need to remove the background from this piece. So I'm going to use the wonderful magic wand tool and I'll select that background and uh, then select similar and then delete it. That magic wand tool is also a, a pretty awesome uh, tool as well. And then I just need to clean up any of the, uh, the little extra stray uh, bits to make it uh, blend better with the background that we've, that we've got. I could do the magic wand for that, but it might take away some of the actual um, text uh, that I, I don't want to get rid of. Again, devil's in the details here. And I'm going to, uh, the other side's going to need something too. So I'm going to just grab one more piece from that second photo for the other side. Uh, and for this little piece, I want to keep the gold because of, uh, because of the way it looks. But I need to get rid of the black edge so it will blend better with the main image. So I use that magic wand tool uh, again to do that. And um, I also need to clean up the goal so it look, looks at least a little bit like it was meant to be there. So I'm just cutting off the edges of that. And then I can rotate it and put it up against that side seam after I finish doing this. We'll rotate it. <laughs> and push it against that seam to make it look like, hopefully, it was meant to be there. And that is it. That's the finished image. What I am going to do is use the uh, magic wand tool. I'm going to select that black border, and then I'm going to select each individual uh, image that I've been working on and delete and that'll delete everything behind that black border so then I've got a clean image and that's what it looks like so all we have to do now is uh, print out the PNG file I need to flip it first because sometimes I forget to do that and then we'll print that thing out and see if, what it looks like on a tumbler just gonna trim it down So here you have it. I think it turned out really great. Uh, here is the seam on the back, which of course is camouflaged. So 
I didn't make a mistake, but had I, maybe you wouldn't have been able to have told. I did this one on a matte tumbler and it came out fantastic. But I thought, you know, this tin, here we go, the tin is actually shiny, so maybe it would work better on a regular tumbler. tumbler. So I did a regular tumbler as well. Um, this probably, the regular tumbler is probably a little bit more authentic to the tin. I have to say, I love this matte uh, tumbler though. If you haven't sublimated on any matte tumblers, you really need to give them a try. On some images, they are fantastic. And here are the two. One of the things I did a little differently, here's the matte one that we, um, that we did together. I did, after I pressed it, change the seam to go all the way up on this second one. And also, it's funny, on the original one that we did, there are some little marks that were on the 10. Let's see, where is this? Some marks that were on the 10 where it had been scuffed up. And of course, they came out so well that it looks like the tumblers messed up. So I went in and got rid of those so uh, they're not on this one. So something to think about if you're, if you're making your own image, sometimes uh, looking too authentic can uh, be a downside. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel as we'll be doing more sublimation videos. We're gonna make some more images and some upcoming videos as well as uh, sublimating the bottom, which I talked about before. We're going to do that in an upcoming one as well. So that about does it. Thanks again. Have a fantastic day. What we're going to do today... Okay, so I realized I haven't told you who I am. My name's Roy, and um, I have a flickering light. It's going to drive me crazy. The first thing we need... Hey, y'all. Stop it.